Hello everyone, welcome to Edipedia World. I am C. Radhika Singhal. In the last lecture, we were discussing regarding leverages. Leverages are used as a tool or an instrument to measure the incidence of the fixed cost on the profitability of the company. There is one more new model which is used to locate the investment in working capital or current assets of the company. It is working capital leverage. Working capital leverage is used to measure the sensitivity of return on investment due to change in the level of current assets. Let's say if there is a 30% increase in the working capital of a company, then what is the impact of that increase on the return of investment of that company? And if there is no impact, then working capital leverage could be computed as current assets divided by total assets plus the change in the level of the current assets. And if there is an impact, then we compute that working capital leverage as the ratio of percentage change in ROI divided by the percentage change in working capital. To discuss this in more or to understand this concept in detail, let's do an illustration. If I have to compare the sensitivity of earnings of two companies for 30% change in the level of current assets. So there are two companies, X Limited and Y Limited. Both are having total assets of 14 lakh. But the current assets in X Limited is more, 10 lakh. And Y Limited is 4 lakh. And both are have, working at same EBIT, 1 lakh 50,000. But since the current assets in X Limited is more, and in Y Limited is less, what is the impact of 30% change Say in X limited 3 lakh rupees and in Y limited 1 lakh 20 thousand rupees. If there is a fall in the current assets, what will be the impact on its earning? So in X limited, its earning is computed as 10 lakh divided by total assets 14 lakh less the change which is of 3 lakh 30% of 10 lakh. There is a 0.90% impact on the company X working capital leverage. And in company Y, there is an impact of 0.3125. So more the current assets of the company, the more is the working capital leverage for that company. More is the impact on the profitability of the company. Now we are discussing all these leverages. The emphasis is on what? It is to compute what is the impact on the profitability of the company. Right? The motive of the company or you can say the management is to increase the wealth of the shareholder, which is to enhance the earning per share value of the company. So if a company has to judge which capital structure is the optimal one, it goes, it evaluate that which optimal structure or the capital structure is giving them the highest EPS. But there might be a point, uh, there is a point where the EPS of two capital structure is same. What will the company do in that scenario? So if a company has that objective to increase the wealth or the maximization of the EPS, both the capital structure is optimal for the company. That means at that point, the company is indifferent between two capital structures. This point is called as indifference point. To explain it, let's say there is one equity plan or the equity capital structure for a company at a certain level of EBIT. At the same level of EBIT, the company also has some another plan, uh, which is debt equity plan, so debt is also involved. But when you compute the earning per share from both these plans, they are same. So both the capital structure could be opted by the company. So at that level of EBIT, both the capital structure will have the same EPS at some level of EBIT. So if the EBIT increases or decreases, the EPS will get impacted accordingly. But at that point, where the EPS in both the capital structure, in the debt or in the debt equity plan, is same. That point is called as indifference point. So, if a company only has equity, how will you compute the earning per share of that company? Will you take the earning before interest and tax? Reduce the tax portion, that is the earning available to equity shareholder, and divide it by the number of equity shareholder, equity shares. This is equal to the earning per share for the company, right? If the company also has a debt. In such scenario, to compute the earning per share, we will also reduce the interest portion from earning before interest and tax. 
and divided by the number of equity share we will get our eps and likewise the other the third possibility of a capital structure is the company could have preference dividend also so if a company has preference dividend to compute earning per share we will first reduce the interest portion whatever net amount is available we will reduce the tax portion and from that amount we will reduce the dividend paid to the preference shareholder the net amount is the earning available for equity shareholder and we divide it by the number of equity shares we will get the eps at that in that level of structure so if there is an indifference point the eps in any of the three plans would be same so if i say the company has two options one is equity plan and one is dead equity plan so at at indifference level your ebit is same or you can say that eps is the both the eps and the do the two plans are same so ebit into 1 minus tax divided by number of equity share is equals to plan 2 eps so if i have to compute indifference point i can equate both these equations as equal let's understand this with the help of an example for example a new project under consideration requires a capital outlay of 300 lakhs so one option is to raise this 300 lakhs by issuing equity share of rupees 100 each that is plan 1 plan b is to raise 200 lakhs by equity share and 100 lakh by loan so at what level of earning before interest and tax the eps will be same so if i have to compute eps in plan a i'll reduce so there is no interest what is the earning before interest and tax let's say that is x because at that x level the eps computed from plan a that is equity plan is equal to the eps from plan b so i'll just equate both the equations like one for the equity where eps can be computed and that is equals to the eps computed in debt equity plan so assuming earning before interest and tax is equal to x eps in scenario 1 will be x that is equity plan less tax portion divided by 3 lakh number of equity share this eps is equal to eps computed in debt equity plan so in debt equity plan if i have to compute eps i have to reduce the interest portion also divided by 2 lakh this given equation that 2x is equals to 3x minus 45 lakh so x is equals to 45 lakh this x is the that level of ebit at which even if you go for equity plan or the company goes for debt equity plan the earning per share of the company will remain same so if i have to compute eps at this level so 45 lakh less 15 lakh interest portion less tax divided by the number of share 7.5 lakh likewise if you compute this eps through equity plan which is 45 lakh have we computed it 45 lakh less the interest portion divided by 3 lakh you will again get 7.5 lakh so company could opt either of the proposals this implies that to analyze the profitability i mean to analyze which capital structure is optimal we basically analyze the relationship between the earning before interest and tax and eps so the optimal cap what is the optimal capital structure an optimal is the one which can maximize the price of the equity if a company goes for a plan that if i let introduce excessive debt and the company is keep on enhancing debt the equity shareholder they are the risk averters they do not like so much risk into the company they will leave that company and what will happen if they will leave that company they will not invest into the company the market price of the shares of that company will decrease so the company has to balance between the debt and the equity portion which could be done by the ebit and eps analysis let's assume that we will analyze that what is the impact of ebit over the eps and which project the company will opt depending on its earnings a company has a capital structure of rupees 1 lakh 
the equity capital of rupees 100 each and the debt carries a rate of interest at 10 percent calculate the eps in the following cases so all scenarios are there when the company does not have any debt when the company has 25 percent debt 50 percent debt and 75 percent debt and what is the impact of this capital structure distribution debt equity ratio at different level of ebit so when the ebit is 5000 at debt level of 0 the earning per share is 3 when the debt level percentage increase to 25 percent there's a negative impact on the eps the eps falls to 2 rupees per share further the debt increases because since the ebit is only 5000 the earning available to equity shareholder is zero. So EPS is zero. It further falls. And in such scenario, if the company indulge more debt into the company, its EPS will decline. But what if the EPS EBIT of the company rises to 7,500? In such case, this is the competition. You note that the EPS of the company again falls. In the, since the interest portion, the company is not able to cover that interest portion at 75%, the EBIT is just equals to interest. So there's that 7500 is the financial break even point for the company. Company do not have any earning available to the equity shareholder. All its earnings are used to repay the interest portion. But when the earning before interest and tax increase to 10,000 rupees, in this, the EPS at different levels is same. So when the company has no debt, EPS of the company is 6 per share. When this debt increased to 25% into the company, earning per share is also 6. So equity or debt equity plan, the earning per share is same. This means that at 10,000 level of EBIT, this is the indifference point for the company. So when the company is earning less than the indifference point, introducing more debt into the company will decline the EPS. So the company will not opt for more debt into the company if the expected earning before interest and tax is less than the indifference point EBIT. But what if, if the company is earning more than this indifference point, that is more than 10,000. When the company is earning more than 10,000, the EPS of the company start rising with introduction or introducing more debt into the company. So if the company has earning more than the indifference point, its EPS will rise with increase in the debt equity ratio. So with this, we can analyze the use of this indifference point. At a point where the expected EBIT is equal to the indifference point, the EPS in all the capital structure is same that is in the equity plan the debt equity plan in the, both the plans the earning per share is same so any of the two plans can be opted because it does not impact the earning per share of the company and the company is indifferent to opt for any capital structure in the second scenario where the EBIT is less than 10,000 which is the indifference point the company will go for that op project or that structure which has a lower break even point and when the expected EBIT is more than the indifference point, company will offer that capital structure which has less number of equity share because less number of equity share will increase the EPS of the company. Right? But there could be a scenario where the two projects do not have any indifference point. That is, there is no point at which the earning per share from either of the two plans is same. In such cases, one plan is always better than the other and the one plan which is having the highest EPS is chosen by the company. That's all.